Okay, this is going to be Chapter 3, Workforce Safety and Wellness. And key concepts in this, uh, paramedic wellness is defined as more than the absence of disease. Uh, the body's response to p both positive and negative stresses. Stress management techniques for managing acute stress and chronic stress. And then safety tips and stress management prevention strategies. So, wellness. Simplistic approach, is the pretty much simplest definition of this is going to be the absence of illness. And it doesn't count for all the human complexity. What we see in this is all aspects of the person kind of makes up wellness. Uh, wellness is multidimensional. Uh, an example of this, social, spiritual, physical, intellectual, and emotional, and this is figure 3-1 in your book, all go into a person's wellness. Benefits and methods of wellness. Benefits. Sense of purpose, inner tranquility, and good physical health. Uh, methods to achieve the wellness are going to be good nutrition and aerobic and strength training. And good nutrition involves appropriateness of diet and exercise. Uh, Dep Department of Agriculture's food pyramid depicts major food groups, and we're going to kind of take a look at this here in a second. This, coupled with exercise training or regular exercise, is the best way to stay uh, well. And this is Figure 3-2, U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Pyramid, with a new emphasis on exercise. Um, proper diet is going to be a ample supply and appropriate supply of carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. Uh, obesity... Uh, can lead to a host of complications. Obesity is a body mass index of 30 or greater. Morbidly obese is 100 pounds over your ideal weight. Over 60% of the American men are obese. So exercise combats this. A uh, combination of aerobic exercise and strength training and flexibility training for your body will help you actually get out of back injuries, make you well, make you more fit, more healthy, all, all kind of rounded in one there. Stress. Functions of daily living. Uh, re reaction to stress, there's two types. There is estress and distress. Estress is manageable stress, and distress is an unhealthy maladaptive reaction to stress. Uh, stimulate can cause self-protective reaction of stress in, in the maladaptive stages, survival instinct or fight or flight. Um, modern stress includes psychosocial and intellectual pressures. Uh, Hans Siles pretty much comes up with a general adaptation syndrome, and all human experiences create stress. Uh, response determines if it is a stress or distress. Symptoms of stress. We have psychological, irritability, outbursts, and or restlessness, behavioral, increased smoking, aggressive behavior, increased alcohol or drug use, overeating, withdrawal from activities of daily living. We have physical, autonomic nervous system responses to stress. The parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for involuntary vegetative functions like digestion and heart rate. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the autonomic nervous system responses of fight or flight. So emergency responses at standby influences the brain and epinephrine is a chief neurotransmitter. It has organ system effects. So what we're going to see here is stimulation of both the alpha and the beta receptors, and this will increase the heart rate, make you hypertensive. So continual stress again and again and again that's maladaptive can give you a chronic hypertension, fast heart rate, cardiac disease, and so on. Um, physical, abnormal contractions of skeletal muscles can also be caused in this, and this can also lead to a host of problems. So disorders related to stress. We have migraines, tension, headaches, cardiovascular disorders, respiratory disease, ulcers, colitis, as well as hypertension and cancer. Emotional and behavioral disorders, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, alcoholism. Human psych is not immune to stress. Uh, use defense mechanisms. And an example of this, projection, denial, conversion, and we'll talk about more about these two, the crisis process here just next. So crisis intervention starts with stopping the acute process and pretty simply remove the stimulus. If psychotropic medications are, are required to get the person back into independent function, especially in the acute phase, then utilize them. 
and provide acute stress intervention. And the acute stress intervention is designed and, and there to return the person to independent functioning. Uh, there is an approach to this, a crisis intervention approach, and it's called the SAFER model. Stimulation reduction, acknowledgement of the crisis, facilitated understanding of, of what you were stressed about, uh, and explain basic concepts of stress. Uh, return and restore the person back to independent function is your goals in the SAFER model. Stress management. Process of coping with chronic stress is in an effort to recover from its effects. And we get stress reduction and cognitive restructuring in this. Uh, the process of coping with chronic stress, we should provide some stress reduction, so remove ourselves from the element. And cognitive restructuring is actually some action must be taken to reframe the brain's interpretation of the stimulus so that it's non threatening. And the paramedic needs to learn first to recognize early warning systems of stress, both immediate and long term. So stress management training, as far as an organization goes, there are organizational benefits to stress management training. Uh, loss, of, loss of time in stress management training is outweighed by the loss of sick leave, worker compensation, associated medical cost, and employee turnover. There are a number of stress management techniques, and a group and organization, the bigger they are, should actually probably implement some of these stress management techniques. Specific stressful situations. Uh, acute traumatic stress, unexpected or sudden event that is unlike the stress of day-to-day -day EMS. Uh, Pre-deployment briefing explains the situation and potential stressors, if, if possible. Clear delegation of authority and specific task assignment can help eliminate some confusion and helplessness. Uh, incident command must consider any kind of men mental or physical limitations of the responders, so please provide rotations. Don't just put somebody out there and continuously run them again and again and again. After a major incident, all responders should be encouraged to rest, moderate alcohol, and reduce caffeine intake. Diffusings are important as well. Immediate intervention intended to avert an acute stress reaction among the responders. And a one way to do this is a critical incident response team, or have them available, is called to meet with the affected personnel. Purpose is to quickly explore the event and educate the responders about the effects of stress. And a good way to do this is to give them a critical incident stress debriefing. It may be triggered by an extraordinary event, a related occurrence, or or request is how we would initiate a CISD. Um, private meeting, only the CURT team and the responders for the CISD. Timing is important and the objective of the CISD is to educate. Post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD uh, symptoms include persistent intrusion, recollection of the event, and that's because of the way that it encodes in their head. It encodes in their head under, or in their brain under stress hormones. So they get flashbacks and they can get chronic absenteeism of this. <clears throat> Personal injury prevention. Uh, in many situations, injuries could have been lessened or eliminated. Emergency responders have experienced an increased emphasis on safety and an easy way to, to increase the emphasis on safety is by the use of regulations and standards. <clears throat> uh, examples of this, uh, back safety rules, lift only loads that can be carried safely, follow safe lifting guidelines, and exercise. Risk management is, to, is there to actually emphasize safety. Uh, the goal is to reduce paramedic injury. Risk manager or safety committee identifies hazards and tries to mitigate them or eliminate them. <clears throat> identifies trends and implements changes, performs an audit and reassesses their success, hopefully they have a success, and called the plan, do, check, act approach is what they kind of go over in risk management. So risk management is good. It's there to emphasize uh, paramedic safety and not to injure the par or get, have the paramedic in a good state of wellness. Safety. Every paramedic has a responsibility to maintain the safety of the station and the emergency vehicle, emergency response vehicle. <clears throat> um, 
Other safety concerns include emergency response. Examples of this um, practice caution when advancing upon intersections, expect the unexpected when passing others, running lights and sirens, things like that. So in motor vehicle scene hazards uh, or emergency response, please pay attention. Be Have your head on a swivel or have an enheightened, a heightened awareness. Scene hazards, personal safety is a primary concern. <clears throat> Individual and collective responsibility when approaching the scene of a motor vehicle collision. A driver and paramedic should get a windshield survey of the scene and report obvious hazards to one another. Uniform controversy. What they're talking about here in this in the book is button downs may look like law enforcement. Polo style shirts are safer. Body armor may be thought of as protective, personal protective equipment. Uh, may encourage you though, however, to enter in an unsafe scene if you are 10 foot tall and bulletproof. House calls. Uh, start with a windshield survey. Emergency lights should be extinguished before you arrive. If there's no evidence of scene violence, park either diagonally across the end of the driveway or backed into the scene. Carry only minimal equipment. Approach the house from an oblique angle. Uh, whenever possible, try to use two medics. When you verify the address and approach the door, approach the door from the door handle side. That way you have some protection or, or some cover. Uh, domestic violence calls are some of the most dangerous. If you feel unsafe in any means at all, wait for the arrival of law enforcement officers before entering. This is an example in figure 3-5 here, how our uniforms may look similar. And in this one, proper carrying equipment. So, back straight. Infection control. Prevention includes up-to-date immunizations and proper barrier protection. Um, we have kind of a dress-up philosophy when we talk about BSI. Barrier devices, like uh, we can always scale this up and scale this back as an example. So sometimes gloves are appropriate. Sometimes we need mask, gown, and gloves, and glasses. Uh, please be sure to isolate yourself appropriately and don gloves before approaching. Infectious disease exposure. Uh, protect from bodily fluids is paramount. Please use all the div barrier devices that are readily available. If a potential exposure, uh, exposure occurs, expose the area. It should be blotted clear and thoroughly washed with soap and water. And then seek medical treatment. Most services have an exposure protocol in some form or fashion. Uh, equipment should be decontaminated. The book suggests a 1 to 100 solution of bleach and water. Conclusion. Contributing factors to a paramedic's wellness and ability to practice paramedicine, an enlightened attitude about health and wellness will, f will keep you in the game a whole lot longer, and a heads-up attitude about safety will as well. References for this lecture are out of the Professional Paramedic Volume 1 Foundations of Paramedicine First Edition pages 38 through 55 and this is going to be chapter 3. If you have any questions concerning any of the content feel free to give me a call. My name is Roy Smith, smithrdimsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.